Hello world, and welcome to Introduction to Keywand Administration. My name's J.D. Burke, and I'm joined today with Luis Sanchez. We're sales engineers with Keywand. Keywand uh, is a company that makes a SaaS and SCA product. And hopefully all of you that are joined in today are users of Keywand and um, have some questions about how to use the administration panel and how to administer your Keywand um, product. And by the time we get done here, uh, Luis and I will hopefully have taught you something about that. The agenda for today is a little bit about us, Keywand, a brief overview of Keywand, an overview of the admin menus inside the Keywand dashboard, and then we'll take a deeper dive into selected menus, including uh, even a deeper dive into setting up, using the menus to set up, configure and set up single sign-on of key one. And then we'll bring it back to the surface again and close it off with uh, our Q&A session. And remember, there's a question panel to go ahead and type in your questions and we'll try and field those as we go along. So a little bit about key one. Key one is a global company that's owned by uh, Adira. Adira is the same company that owns TestRail, Assembla, Ranarex, and Travis CI. You may have heard of some of those. Uh, Kiwan is based in Spain, and we make a um, SaaS product that does SaaS and SCA, so static application security testing and software composition analysis. Um, it, like I said, it's a hybrid uh, cloud solution. Looks something like this. So many of you uh, um, hopefully have seen this or have a version of this that you log into um, at, in your enterprise. Well, we won't go over any of the functionality of, of Keywan today except for um, the, me the administration menu, which is in the upper right hand corner after you log in. And if you go to your dashboard and log in and click on that upper right hand menu, it'll pull down something like this. And we plan on stepping through many of those um, screens so you have an idea of what functionalities are tucked in there and um, how to leverage those to fine tune the key one for your organization. So those menus were uh, audits, management, models management, reports, account management, application management, users, insights, which is our SCA product, documentation and how to download the Keywan Local Analyzer, which is our on-prem um, job applet that actually scans your code. Three of these nine management menus are pretty straightforward. Reports management, documentation, and download KLA. Reports management menu is available with our governance feature and is used to build customized higher level PDF reports via canned widgets. And when you when you go through reports management, you can select which widgets you want to to use to craft a um, bespoke report that people who use the governance tab can can click on to create a PDF. Documentation uh, is just a quick link to our publicly available document repository, where you'll find our user manual and our admin manual, and some of the the uh, tech notes on how to do um, things like integration or later on when Luis talks about SSO, how to do um, integration into single sign-on and that kind of stuff. The download Keywan local analyzer menu is a quick link to download the Java application that's our local scanning agent. So recall the Keywan is a hybrid SaaS solution. Part of it lives up in the cloud that does the advanced analytics, but the actual scanning is done on-prem with a Java application called Keywan local analyzer and you can download that or your users can download that from this quick link on that menu. So those three are pretty straightforward and easy and we won't spend a lot of time digging down much deeper than that into those. Next up uh, is uh, insights management, account management and application management. So uh, those three are where we start to get into the, the good stuff. Let me uh, switch screens on you. So 
like I said, we're talking about this menu in the upper right-hand corner. And if you pull that down, um, you can see things like reports management, documentation, and download Q1 local analyzer, which we talked about. And now we're going to take a look at account management. So account management is a menu that we uh, have in place to help you, the user, whoever's logged in, to administer your uh, personal account. So you can change your um, user login information. So your, your uh, display name, for example. You can also change your password. When you originally created this account, you were given a um, one-time password that you can type into here and go ahead and set to something that's more meaningful to yourself. You can set some, or if you're an administrator, you can set some organizational information like the display name for the organization and you can add a, a logo, for example. And later on, um, Luis is going to help us with this part, which is um, where we'll come back to to set this, some of the single sign-on variables for the organization. If you are integrating Keywon into other external actors, you can come up here and set up your own private keys. So for example, um, I think we'll come back here again with Luis and look at some LDAP type um, keys to help with the single sign-on. Also under this account management screen, um, administrators can, can lock down the cloud portion, the engine portion that's used to analyze the, the results of the scans. So Keywon um, frequently updates the, the engine, the analysis engines. So we make routine bug fixes and improvements and we add new languages and new rules and we publish those as new versions of our engine. And you have the ability as an administrator to lock that down. So if you want to keep um, the analysis engine that's used to analyze your scans and produce metrics on your scans fixed at a certain point in time, you can go ahead and lock that down. You can also, uh, we have some features in, that you can access from here, which is to create a centralized configuration file for your Key One Local Analyzer. Remember, Key One Local Analyzer is the part that gets downloaded to the developer's laptop, for example. And you can push um, a config file from the organizational level down to the end user level so that um, you have some amount of control over the starting point of the scans that your developers are starting. Also under this account management page is the uh, information about the subscription, the total lines consumed. Um, Keywon is based pricing model is based off of lines of code analyzed. So this gives you an idea of what uh, what your limits are and where you are with respect to your limits on over time. And then last under the account management page is uh, the ability to set password policies for the account. So you can, you can use this to set a more complex password scheme uh, if you choose to do individual passwords. Next up is, uh, let me go back. So that was account management. Next up is, a, is application management. Application management is, a, is the menu that allows you to administer individual apps. So recall Keywon is a SAS. SCA tool, and we analyze apps that are submitted to Keywon via the Keywon Local Analyzer, the Java application that runs on your premise. You can create apps or you can introduce applications into Keywon from the KLA, or you can create them from the application management menu. And then once they are created, either via KLA or from this menu, you can start to administer them with a series of functions. So all those are done via these pull-down menus, either from the application or in bulk as you select those. And it allows you to do several things. One, 
you can uh, select apps and then change their classification. So whether um, their default business value or or declare a, a this tag for that application. You can also set um, the provider or additional metadata about these applications, all from, from this um, application management menu. You can also change the model. So recall that applications are scanned via a set of rules and rules are bundled together in models. So you can set, for example, for this application, Android Insecure Bank, I want to use this model, this bundle of rules called CQM, or any of these others that we had set up. You can, you can set the default model to be used from there. You can also, um, because Keywan is an ISO 25000 software quality-based tool, you can set the characteristic um, flavors that you want to um, establish for this application. So that is to say for a given application, we want it to um, have relative uh, efficiency, maintainability, portability, reliability, and security characteristics um, for when we do our scans. Then when we do our scans, we'll try and encourage you to work on defects or vulnerabilities that help the application fit that footprint or that characteristic um, pattern better. You can also um, define the audit. So Keywan has this ability called lifecycle, where on pull requests, once a developer develops code and does a pull request to check their branch back in to the repo, the CI can make a call out to Keywan and run what's called a life cycle check and run an audit on that pull request. And that audit is a collection of checkpoints or metrics tests that we run on the, or we look for in the scan and develop a pass fail score for that pull request. So from the application management screen, you can assign any one of the audits which is a collection of checkpoints to a given application. And that allows you to assert a quality metric um, on that pull request. All right, next up uh, is insights management. Recall insights is our SCA tool. Insights management allows you to look at and manipulate the database of information we use for our SCA scan, for our, our uh, um, Insights scan. It allows you to look at the vulnerabilities that are registered in the SCA database. So we pull our, our CVEs and CWEs from NIST and other folks, NVD. And the Insights management screen allows you to sort through that database and then you can view by either by component or by vulnerability and then take selected actions on given entries in that database. So for example, for this vulnerability, I can choose to mute it for this specific app or per application, the application it shows up in, or I can mute it for all applications, for example. And then the same with respect to components. You can view that same um, set of, of uh, information by component from a component point of view and go ahead and, and pull back the um, CVEs that are registered against that component and then manage those. Um, you can also oops, do the same thing. A little overzealous in my clicking here. Let me get back to where we were. You can manage the Insights SCA database by license policies as well, which is a similar kind of action where we're looking now at the licenses in the Insights SCA database 
and you can view the licenses that um, you use in your projects and then you can modify those as well by changing the risk that this license presents to your organization or define a custom risk. And then like in the uh, vulnerabilities point of view, we can view it by component as well. So if we say that for a given component, the risk is, um, is configurable. All right, so that took us through account management, which we use to administer your own account settings. For example, your username, password, display name, and some of the single sign-on type information if you were an admin. We went through application management, which allowed you to look at the individual applications that are checked into Keywon and then change parameters around those. Um, largely, that's uh, changing the default model. Um, uh, although you can also do additional things like change the audits that are assigned to those applications. And then we looked at insights management, which allows you an opportunity to look at the data inside the insights SCA database and make comments or modifications to that data with respect to your organization. Next up in our list of nine, uh, these last three, audits management. We talked a little bit about that with um, respect to application management. Models management, which also showed up in application management, and users management. So let's take a look at uh, audits. Actually, let's go ahead and click here. Audits are used, um, like I had said earlier, audits are used to enforce quality controls onto pull requests being of code being checked back into the repo. Audits are, are uh, actually a container, a, a logical container that holds a thing called checkpoints. Checkpoints are weighted um, metrics or indicators that we use to um, generate a score for a given pull request. And then that score is used later on in the lifecycle tab to generate a Boolean pass or fail that your CI can use to, to break a build or do whatever it is um, your CI does when they get a poor performing audit, poor performing pull request. <clears throat> and what that looks like is under audits management in the upper right hand, pull down the audits man management, you get a list of the audits that we have created for this account. And you saw those earlier under application management where you could assign one of these by default to a given application. So from here you could create a new application, I'm sorry, a new audit, just by clicking on new, defining the uh, metadata for that audit, and then assigning a, a pass score for that audit. And then you populate that audit. So in this case, it has a, a pass score of 90% you populate it with checkpoints. So this one has four checkpoints. And those four checkpoints are these. And you could add additional checkpoints if you want from a series of, of pre-existing tests that we do or that we make available to you. So you could select any of these and then fill out the, the information, its contribution to the overall score, whether it's mandatory, um, some of the particulars depending on which type of checkpoint you select, and then what its threshold is for a pass or fail. And then once you add that, then that gets added to the list of checkpoints that, that are performed, and you can start to see the weighting of a given checkpoint and its contribution to the overall passing score for the audit. And then, like we did before, you could go to application management and you could assign a defect, uh, an audit to a given application so that every time Keywon sees that application, it runs this audit and generates that pass fail value. Um, so to help inform external actors if the external actors are actually checking that value and figure out what to do. It could also be used in other, other scenarios where 
for example, not an external actor, but an internal actor like an engineering manager could look and see whether uh, an audit has generated a pass or a fail for a given um, pull request. So these are um, all, many of our functions that throughout Keywan all have this hamburger menu in the upper left-hand side where you can pull that down and either export as a CSV or pull it back as a PDF if you want to um, go old school on this and make this available for some meeting near you. And as in all of our stuff, most of this is available via API as well. So next up after audits was models management. Models management is a uh, Once again, available from the administration menu. Remember that Keywan scans your source code with things called rules. Rules are bundled together into things called models. So models management allows you to um, scan, to, to modify the bundles of rules. So models are bundles of rules and the rules are what scans your source code for the patterns that we care about. And models management allows you to fine tune the rules that are in those models. So that's done by going over to the models management menu. You can see, you can create a new model from scratch if you want. And when you do that, we collect some amount of metadata here, like the model name. But then we ask you, do you want to create one from scratch? Do you want to create a bucket to hold rules that's empty? And then you get to select which rules you pour into that bucket? Or do you want to select from an existing model and just modify one of the ones that already has been created? And, and either way, you go ahead and fill in the information create a model, and then from there, you can see what's in the model. And if it's a brand new one, it'll be empty. But you can go over to rules, for example, and then start to select or deselect rules to add into that model. You can filter through, the Keywan gives you more than 4,000 rules to start with. So you can use the filter bar to filter down and find um, rules that are applicable to whatever scenario you're analyzing for, whether it's language or perhaps a normative standard or a framework, for example. And then you can go ahead and select those. Most of our rules are um, <coughs> applicable to or have a version that's applicable to all the languages we speak. So you should be able to find something for um, a similar rule for every language we speak. But some of them are based off of um, not just security, but some of these other parameters from ISO 25000. And you can select those as well and add um, what will appear to be more um, quality indicators or quality metrics to your rule sets. So if you are interested in and scanning your code, not only for security issues, but for, for example, uh, what we might consider complexity and quality type metrics like duplicated code or maybe um, code coupling, you could select those. And then if you um, have an interest in managing the total um, applications characteristic patterns, so that is to say for a given application, we want it to match a certain mix of characteristics. So, so maybe it's a uh, customer facing web app that we want security to be very high, very important, but portability can be lower, but efficiency needs to be somewhere in between security and, and portability. We can set that weighting and that flavor and then start to do a similar evolution with respect to the languages Perhaps we're less interested in how the HTML 
in that application is performing, but much more interested in the JavaScript, we can change that weighting. And continuing on to define what we consider the relative differences are between a very high priority defect and a very low defect. And then again, assigning a time budget for a given one of these defects. So that if we find a very high issue, very high priority issue, we're gonna by default allocate or estimate, it's gonna take eight hours to repair that difficulty. And that shows up over here in code analysis and code security when we do action plans and we start to uh, give you a time estimate of how long it's going to take to do a given body of work. And then once you complete that and pack a rule, pack a model with rules and set the various parameters to that, you can go ahead and publish that model and make it available for others to use. And that is important because some of the analyses we may have done over here may have been done with a previous version of a model. And when you publish a new version of that model, then you'll be given an opportunity to rescan your code with the new model with whatever new rules and variables that you've added to that. All right. So next up is users management. So Kiwan is an RBOC tool. So as a as an administrator or there are two higher order um, users of Kiwan. One is called an account owner and the other are administrators. So there will be one account owner and many, one to many administrators. And then account owners and administrators can create additional users. And then those users, because we're RBOC, can be assigned to roles and groups. So uh, the menus that we're gonna look through with the user management, upper right hand corner, users management, allow us to create users. So that's all the information you saw under the um, account tab. So the username, the unique username, the email and display information for that person. You can either enable the account or not. Um, and then you can have Keywon generate a password, which it sends to that user at that email address. And then from there, that user can log in and go to the account manage their version of an account management page and change their password to something that's mean meaningful for them. And then from there, um, you'll see a list of users. And I'm actually logged in as an account owner. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and select a user and then, for example, promote that user to selected administer, administrative um, permissions. And I can go ahead and start to manage their permissions um, against users, user groups and roles. So someone here as an administrator or an account owner, I will come over to here and create user groups and create roles, I can either use existing roles or I can create a new role that has hand-packed access in it and then start to assign those to groups and then start to assign users to groups. This demo account that I have is not terribly rich with examples in the RBOC space, but this one is. This one has many more users and it has examples of many more user groups. So you can see uh, it's much, uh, give, gives you a better view on how you can create a user group and then start to select users and add it to that group. And then the, an example of existing um, default roles and roles that I have created myself and assigned a custom set of actions or verbs to that role. And then from there, I can assign um, 
a given um, user to uh, selected por portfolios and then the roles for that portfolio. Or I can um, do it the other way where I'm managing by application, where I'm taking a given user and giving them specific permissions to individual applications or assigning a role. This user has a role for that application. Okay, so next up, let's review a little bit about what we've uh, covered so far. So we went over uh, the administrative menus in the upper right-hand corner. Those included uh, the nine menus, which are audits management, models management, reports management, account management, application management, users management, insights management, documentation, and download key one local analyzer. Remember, key one, download key one local analyzer is a quick link so you can download the Java application that actually scans code on your, your code base, your premise. Documentation is a quick link to the um, key one homepage and the document repository where you can find the user manual and admin manual for key one, as well as tech notes and tips and tricks on how to uh, do integrations, for example, and troubleshooting, that kind of stuff. Insights management is the, the series of pages we use to view the SCA database and mute or modify entries in that database. So that's packages and or CVEs uh, that are in that database and with respect to our code base or your code base that you're scanning. Users management was the screen we used to add um, regular users to key one and then assign them per RBOC to portfolios and groups and give them um, role-based access. You can also administer um, and promote users to administrators from there if you are an administrator and or the account owner. We looked at application management, which was where we looked at all the individual applications that have been introduced into Kiwan. These would be your microservices or your applications, your um, bodies of code that we've scanned. And then you can administer those. And generally that's, you can change the default model, which is the collection of rules that get used to scan your application. And you can do things uh, like change the um, audit that is assigned to that application. We looked at account management, which is where you set your own password and your own uh, display name information. One of the things we did not drill down into very deeply at this stage was the SSO portions of that page. And that's because Luis is gonna help me here in a minute to, to explore that in much more detail. We talked about reports management, which is a menu that allows you to select from our pre-set report widgets and create a PDF, a hand-packed PDF out of our widgets that's used by engineering managers in the governance module to generate high-level reports based off of the analyses of your applications and your portfolios. We looked at models management, which was where we created those containers called models that hold rules and the rules are the things that actually scan your code and then from there you can we showed you how to drill down into models and rules so that you could um, fine tune the uh, metadata around the model and the indicators and metrics that a model and its rules generate what we did not go into in models management was how you actually create your own rules and add your own custom built rules to the key one rules so that you can add those into your models. Those information on how to do that can be found in other webinars and by going to the documentation on our website and looking up um, key one rules development. You can figure out how to create your own rules and then come back to here add them to your key one so you can add them to your models and then apply them to your 
applications. And then we lastly, we looked at audits, which were, were those quality control checkpoints. Audit is a, a container, a bucket that holds checkpoints. Checkpoints are the tests that we use or that we apply to the scans that you run and generate that Boolean thumbs up or thumbs down um, based on your input on whether a pull request is meeting the, the quality and checkpoint criteria that you have for your applications. Uh, so once again, that's all in the upper right-hand corner of Key One when you log in. And as I, as I led you to believe, um, there's some important stuff under account management, um, namely um, single sign-on. And it's, it's a, a very important thing that's rather complex. And you can read more about it if you go to documentation, or you can phone a friend like I did and uh, call up Luis uh, and ask him for help on how to set up single sign-on um, for key one. So let me uh, hand this back over to Luis and then ask, uh, Luis, please, will you uh, say hi to everybody and help us learn how to do Yes, yeah, so. so you should be seeing my screen right now. Yes. Right, okay, perfect. So good afternoon, good morning, good night to everyone. Thank you for being here in this presentation. My job is very is very easy because for the sake of time we we record this video last week, just uh, integrating it one with uh, an Active Directory we have at Key One also, and I want to explain to you that in the Key One world the single sign on and this is important is only for authentication. So we don't do any authorization with single sign on. It's only authentication. And in this game of single sign on we have two different parties. So the service provider in this case is Key One, and the identity provider is the one that is providing it for, uh, with the identity of the users. So this is the thing we record last week we, because I needed the help of my, of my administrator. So first thing, I enter into the Key One, I enter into the Key One server. In this case, it's an on-prem server I installed just for this demonstration. So it's installed by default, and I only have one user which is the owner and administrator. So I can show you here, if I go to, to account management and, and the user, that I don't have any other users. So to enable the single sign-on, I have to go to the account management and the organization, I'm ready to go. But remember, before enable single sign-on, be sure you are reading this documentation very carefully because this step, uh, you cannot roll back the single sign-on and the domain is going to be created for you. And I also need the metadata information from my identity provider. Uh, this is something that your Active Directory or other SAML um, directory, I mean, any directory that, that has SAML support can give you. And then you need to import in Key1 that information. So this is the way we let know Key1 that we are using, we are going to use an identity provider. In this case, is a provider that is uh, from Active Directory Federation Services, which is the product from Microsoft that has uh, the support for single sign-on using SAML. Then Key One will create a new domain for, for you, and this is going to be the new URL to enter the Key One server. This is important. I mean, this data you can you can go back to this uh, to this place to get this data, but take note of this. When you try to enable the single sign-on, the administrator of Key One, in this case myself, is going to receive the activation code. So you need to go to your email of the administrator and put the activation code in Key One. This is important. This is the last step just to activate and to create the domain ID in Key One. In Key One. And then you must let the identity provider know that Key One is trying to to really to let the user pass using its service. So Key1 is going to provide with a URL that is the metadata information you need to put into the identity provider. And this is why I had to call my administrator and 
asked him to record this video in the domain control of Windows, and I told him, okay, just record a video, just showing the people how to how to import this metadata into the Active Directory. So you need to import this information directly from Key One server. So maybe you can use your URL. And for this specific demonstration, I put this demonstration here because as you can see here, this is going to fail. If I try to import the metadata directly from the Key One server, it's going to fail. And the reason is my Key One server has no valid certificate. It's a self-signed certificate as this is not going to, to work. So the administrator has to go to the Key One server and download the metadata, the metadata XML file uh, just to import this data into the identity provider. And this is what um, he, he had to do last week. So getting the metadata and then import this metadata into the identity provider. This is going to tell the, the identity provider that there's a service provider trying to enter into a service using um, its, uh, let's say, identity services. So now you have to create this policy into the Active Directory, taking this into consideration like the signature, uh, encryption and so on. And then one important thing after you configure this connection using the metadata is that you need to map the actual user ID you are using to enter in Key1. In this case, what we are going to map is the user ID that is in the email we are using to enter the, the Active Directory, in this case, the LDAP. So what we are going to map is the email address, I mean, the ID part of the email address into the name ID we are getting from Key1. This is very important because in, in other environments, in your environment, maybe this rule has to be different because you are uh, letting the user pass into your ID using a different, a different a different field. So next time, the, ne the next thing I have to do is to create the actual users in Key1. So Key1 is going to tell the, the identity provider to let me go, to let me pass, let's say, but I need the user to be created in Key1 to be able to map the information from the user in Key1 to the user in my, in my identity provider. And I have to use the new login URL that uh, key one is providing once we have the uh, the single sign on in place we need to use this url to enter my key one server uh, this is the url you have to uh, give to all your users once everything is, is is set and ready so now i am entering key one as administrator again just to create one user to test the integration so i need to go to the user uh, management and then create a new user as long as I am using the email just to enter a key one using my identity provider, the important field here is the username, this single sign, this SSO number two. And the email should be, I mean, something real, but I'm using my own email because it's, it doesn't matter. The important information is the username. Then I have to create the account. And this is also very important. I need to prevent that the user can enter the key one server using using his user and password because i want this user to go always using the identity provider okay so once i have all my users in the platform and this is something you need to do and this is something important because you need to create the users and if you want to and you need to create a lot of users one thing you can do is just export the user from the from the ldap from the directory and then use the REST API of Key1 to create the users in a batch file, let's say in a, in a, batch, in a batch way, uh, all, at, all at once. So once I check this configuration, now I have to give the users the correct URL with the domain ID just to enter Key1. This is going to be the URL I am using in my portal or maybe in an email communication or whatever. And one thing that is important is that I have to enable the single sign-on part. So I need to put this little SSO parameter in the URL to let Key1 know that we are going to enter in Key1 using a different identity provider. So when I try to enter Key1 using this URL, this new URL, Key1 is, instead of giving me the form, the form just to put my username and password, will give me only this button. 
and this button will send me to the actual identity provider. In this case, it's an Active Directory. Sorry for the Spanish, but this is an Active Directory we, are, we have in, a, in, our, um, in our office. And in this case, I am able to enter the Key1 server using this identity provider. You can see my, my email is sso2 at key1.com. The important part, which I am, I am, I am going to be map, mapping with the key one user ID is the username. So the key one username is SSO2 and the ID I am mapping is the, the ID I have from this email. And that's all. If I if I if I give my user ID and password, the identity provider knows that I want to go to key one. I will I will provide the key one, uh, let's say, web page. And that's all. For the for the single sign-on integration, I mean this. I did this video just for the matter of time because you know, uh, doing a live demo of this could be very much longer, let's say. But if you have any questions, just raise your hand, and I can give you. Um, I can open the mic, and then you can do whatever questions you you have about this, or maybe uh, about the the rest of the presentation. We're, we are at that time where we're going to talk about questions and answers. So um, using that as a segue, I get to ask Luis a question uh, <laughs> about single sign-on. So you, do, you just did uh, LDAP, right? But it's essentially the same for like if I use Okta or something like that, right? I still need to know the URL, the target of the identity provider, and I need yeah, to have my the tokens. The main trick is, is the, the single sign-on is based on SAML, which is a standard in the internet. So the trick is I didn't use LDAP in the end. I use, uh, in, in this case, Active Directory Federation Services that has support for, uh, for SAML. In the case of Okta, uh, that product is, is a SaaS identity provider, and they, they have SAML in, the, in their product. So it's very easy to integrate with Okta too. Yeah, so so it's going to be very familiar. It'll be maybe a little bit different, but it's going to have all the same parts, right? Yeah, you you need to interchange this information, all the metadata from the service provider to the identity provider, and the other way around. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. And then um, once again, I'd remind everybody else who's watching and listening, there is a question panel in the Go To Meeting Control panel on your computer on the right hand side or whatever. Um, feel free to type in your questions and we'll try and answer those. Carlos already asked a question and I think we already answered the question, Carlos, but it's a pretty good question. And that's um, talking about, Carlos asked about user group and application permissions and kind of showing how that works. So uh, because we have some time here, we can go ahead and jump down into that and I can try and do this without screwing it up, which is a big if. Um, but from the upper right-hand panel, you saw that we have applications. So this is the, the demo account that has a whole bunch of applications. And so these are all, these would be all of Carlos's applications that he scanned. And then uh, we went over to users. These would be all of Carlos's users. And then he's talking about um, uh, assigning group permissions to applications. So here are all the groups that Carlos has set up for his customers or for his users. And he's assigned roles to those user groups and then attached the roles and user groups to different users. So then we go over here to application management and you select whatever application um, or applications uh, you have an interest in. And then uh, let's see if I can find the right screen here. I haven't done this in a while, so I have to make sure I got this. Uh, down correctly. Well, uh, let's Try again over here to user management. And then select my users. So under users management, select the users and then you can um, 
modify their permissions on applications. So once again, to show you that, user management, select the users, go to bulk actions, permissions on applications. And then these, once again, these are all Carlos's applications. And then uh, they, he can start to select which roles he wants to assign to given applications. And remember the roles were defined over here. So these are the roles that he's created. And from over here, he can um, start to assign those from there. So let's see. And then the next question, um, Carlos asks again, another great question, which which um, I should point out, Carlos, if, if we did not answer your question or for any of those that you have asked questions that we don't get to, um, we actually get a list of those questions after the webinar and we'll, we can email you with um, more specific answers. And that uh, the assumption here is that you're already a Kiwan customer, which means you have access to Luis and myself as well as support and as well as the customer success team. So these kind of questions, you don't have to wait for a webinar to ask these kind of questions. You can go ahead and email Kiwan um, today, right now, and get somebody to help you with these today, right now. But since Carlos brought it up, uh, Carlos is talking about adding a new model to uh, analyze Ruby code. So remember, models are containers of rules. So you go to model management and you come down here and you actually, I think what I'll do is uh, do it on this one because it's a little bit cleaner and easier to see. Go to models management, create a new model and we'll call this um, Carlos test, maybe Carlos Ruby, um, a model of Ruby rules. And I can either create it from scratch or I can create it from an existing model. So I could select, if I had one that was a candidate, a donor, I could I could select that and then modify that. But for Carlos's question, we'll just go ahead and create one from scratch. And I create a model and it adds it to my list over here and it has zero rules out of the 4,200 plus that we have a choice of. So then I go over here to rules. And because we are interested in Ruby, I'm just going to filter my list down to Ruby and I'm going to select those three. And perhaps um, I also am interested in some efficiency rules, for example. I'm not sure if we have any in that category. Uh, maybe I'll select some. Uh, I don't know if any maintainabilities work either. But then once I select my rules out, then I can go ahead and um, I go back to indicators. I can modify the indicators for that model. And I can add the rules that speak to metrics, for example, for complexity. Um, maybe I care about um, just overall complexity, cyclomatic complexity, and the Halstead values. And maybe I have a concern about duplicated code. So I can select all those. And then that ends up creating a, a model that contains three Ruby rules and a series of metrics. And then I can go ahead and publish that, which makes that um, available to anybody who scans. So if I were to come back over here and scan my code, or maybe a better way to do that is go over here to application management. And for a given application, I can now select the new rule the, or the new model I created with those rules and apply those rules to this code base. So that's a, a quick a quick response to Carlos's question. And uh, it looks like we're just about to the top of the hour. So I'll go back over here to uh, show you all again. Um, 
and remind you that if you have any uh, comments or questions, please feel free to reach out and um, drop us an email and we'll get back with you and do our best to answer your questions. You can find us at all these coordinates. And with that, um, I'll thank Luis once again for helping me with SSO and uh, thank all of you for joining and look forward to speaking to you again on the next Kiwan webinar. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for joining.